In this video, we're touring three over-the-top mansions. They're big, expensive, and they've been hard to sell. All three hit the market well over a year ago, all three still looking for buyers. In LA, we'll go inside a giant mansion with a Kobe Bryant-themed basketball court and a 70-foot infinity pool. But we'll also reveal the price cuts and just how hard it's been to unload this place. Plus, we head down south to the Sunshine State, up 48 floors over the Atlantic Ocean to check out one of the most luxurious condos in Miami. But it's also been on the market for more than a year. Then we'll head north to the Big Apple and go inside Ivana Trump's former mansion. It's where she tragically passed away after a fall on the home's grand staircase. The listing has been a tough sell, even after a big price chop and over a year on the market, still no takers. Right now, we kick it off in Cali. Hey guys, I'm Ray Parisi with CNBC and we're in Los Angeles today, here to check out a $38 million mansion called the Star Resort. We're going up the curvaceous driveway. We got Josh over here behind the camera and he's on a one wheel. I'm hoofing it and we're gonna do the fast tour. Through the eight foot wide front door is a spectacular foyer. This has 20 foot ceilings and up these steps, I wanna show you this real quick. There's a living green wall. They gotta water this. I wish you could touch it. This is a cascading crystal chandelier. It's 26 feet tall. It drips down into the lower level. We go across here, get my steps in. This is one of the lounges. And now we're at the stone bar. It's got backlit onyx. And Josh Yeo, tight squeeze, tight squeeze. Ooh, close up. There's a piano back here. And if we cut across, we get another angle of this lounge. And this is a 10 foot long fireplace. Josh is gonna head into the dining area and I am gonna show you a 1,000 gallon aquarium. I'm gonna cut through and join you in there from this other way. Dining for 10, crystal glass designer chandelier. And then we're gonna go back here through the black and white kitchen. This is one of several kitchens in the house. And we pass through here, and we're in the living room. All the glass walls disappear and open up to the outside. All right, we're done with the fast tour. Let's do the tour for real now. And for that, we need listing agent Dan Malka. Wait till you hear this guy's accent. Hey, Ray, welcome, welcome to Star Resort. Thank you for coming. This is an impressive backyard. I love this pool. This is a 70 foot long pool. This looks like a grassy backyard, but technically this is actually this is actually structure, part of the house. It is, so this is basically, we are like 48 feet above ground, and this entire backyard is a deck. So this entire backyard is on the structure with like piles going down into the bedrock. So it's got the caissons the case. that hold it up. Yeah. They protect the house against seismic movements and stuff like Correct. that. And they go like between 60 to 100 feet into, in, into the bedrock. It's yeah. crazy. Josh, I wanna show you how far up we are here. Can you come and see this? Check this out around 48 feet above the trees. This is another kitchen. It's a, the, that's the barbecue area. So here you can find everything you want to entertain your friends. You have a, a pizza oven. And you no one like, has ever made a pizza in this oven. Uh, it's brand new. It's brand new. Ice maker. Cool. And big screen TV. And big screen TV, exactly. LED screen TV. Uh, how many kitchens here? Uh, you have uh, a kitchen nook uh, in the living and then a chef kitchen. I love what he calls the black and white kitchen that we saw on the fast store. He calls it a nook. Yeah, it's a nook, but I mean, it's a, that is not a nook. large nook. <laughs> I think it's lost in translation. Yeah, you can't really have a large nook. There's one more dining area over here. It is, so it's, uh, it's called the, pa the family patio. The family patio. I want to be a part of this family. Uh, during like uh, winter time, you have like uh, um, heaters on the ceiling. Well. I've actually never seen this. They have the uh, heat lamps built in and then they got these that are a little more mobile that you can yeah. move closer to the table yeah. if it got chilly. Correct. Which it never really does. And because it's a smart house, you can control those heaters with your phone. You're kidding me. No. Super smart house. So this is the black and white kitchen. You refer to this as the nook. Yeah. The equivalent of the kitchen. I, I wish I had a, a kitchen nook the size of this place. And on the other side of here, you can just see it. We can we can go through. You yeah, want to go? go you go that way. I'll yeah. go this way. I'll meet you in the dining room. So uh, this is a Tom Dixon uh, custom made chandelier. Tom Dixon is pretty well known for this type of designs, like bubbles, and that he put the lights in it. Uh, so it's a pretty cool design. Don't you like the way he says bubbles? 
Say it again. The dog. I <laughs> love it. That's so good. Something that we didn't see in the fast tour back here is the black kitchen. The chef kitchen. And it's black on black with yes. stainless. Check this out. So this is where the chef prepares meals. Exactly. So this is always good to have, you know, like a separate room. For, uh, for the chef, and then you can enter the What's the room behind you? Mm, this is what uh, I like to call it, where you put the bodies. Like. Where you put the bodies. <laughs> when he says it in French, it doesn't sound as bad. Working commercial uh, freezer. Oh wow, I thought it was a pantry. So this is actually a refrigerated yes. freezer. Wow, it's freezing in here. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not on. It's on at all. <laughs> All right, so let's let's get out of the kitchen. This is a part of the house that you saw already in the fast tour. This is that black and white kitchen, the aquarium, and then we're heading into the foyer. Uh, I, I usually call it a foyer, but this is definitely feeling like a foyer. The definition of the word foyer can also mean a big. Uh... Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. See that? We're learning stuff today. Yeah. The green wall that actually is alive. It's a living moss wall. Yeah, it's, it's a really 26 cool. foot high. They've created sort of patterns in the moss. Yeah, so it took them probably like a month to make it like handmade. That looks great, it really warms up the space. Is this also a uh, designer? So uh, this is a custom made uh, icicle chandelier. Icicle. It's very, it's very beautiful, especially when you see it from the bottom. What's down on the lower level? The core entertainment part of this house. And a uh, rock yeah. cactus garden. Exactly. So these are also alive. I'm gonna give you a secret. Those are my secrets. They are? You can touch it. Oh, wow. When fake plants look really, really real, they're actually super expensive. It is. I, I told things, you, nothing is cheap here. This is a climate control wine cellar, yeah? It is, yeah. So you have like your own uh, temperature in this, uh, in this cellar. Do you have any idea how many bottles you can get in here? Uh, pretty much uh, 250. 250 bottles, yeah. nice. I like their taste. They got champagne and tequila. That, those are my drinks. And a very nice rosé as well. Chateau de Sel. Côte de Provence, that's the, where we produce the best rosé. Don't you like when he speaks French? <laughs> uh, and that way we got another bar. This is the, is, I yeah. think, third bar that I've seen in the house. There's one outside. Uh, one yeah, the, third uh, bar. First yeah. floor. Mm -hmm. And then you got a remote control here. Yeah, so this is a pretty cool, I like this video because it's like, you can definitely like change the, the color of oh the Oh my God, that's awesome. Bag. Depending of your mood, you know. Yeah. Like if you're in the blue mood, what mood? What are? I'm in a. Uh, like, is there a purple? There... Yeah, look at it. Oh yeah, nice. Leads us to the uh, the theater, the cinema, the cinema. And first class seating for eight. But uh, this theater can fit like twelve to fifteen people. Me in first class, uh, yeah. aisle two, seat B and C. <laughs> Welcome to to Air Star Resort. Wow, these are like. Uh, See, they are very comfy, serious. right? Okay, you have the button here. And it goes, whoa. You can just swatch whoa. like a cool. Oh, you can also just look at the ceiling. Exactly. Cool ceiling. Inspired by? A Rolls Royce. Inspired by a Rolls Royce. Yes, because you know, when you get inside a Rolls Royce, you always have like those like star on the ceiling of the, yeah. on the top of the car. I know, I didn't know that. I don't get into very many Rolls Royces. <laughs> you have to hang out in Los Angeles more often. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, how do we get out of here? I can't. Just yeah. have another button. So now I'm gonna show you a cool spot that I like in this house. So it's called the Garage Lounge. The Garage Lounge. Yes. I'm gonna translate, it's the Garage Lounge. Wow, this is cool. So you could lounge in here, watch something, and also keep an eye on your cars? Exactly, it's exactly that. You can definitely like a, do a drive in theater. Yeah, drive in theater, check this out. Imagine you pulled your car in the garage, lined it up here, and then you're you're doing a drive-in. It's exactly that, yeah. And you just, you just watch the movie, you know? And then over there is a, a little salon chair for... Yeah, if you want to have a nice haircut. Somebody is a basketball fan that lives here, uh, clearly. The owner is a basketball fan. There's more to see that way, but first we go this way. Exactly. I've seen golf simulators, but not a soccer simulator. Yeah, so here you can play golf, hockey. Mm. Show me some soccer. France versus USA. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's gonna kick my ass. So he's already, what, what kind of shoes are you kicking in today? Uh, Saint Laurent. Ah, yes, right, okay, so, <laughs> so here we go. Let's see how good he does in a Saint Laurent. <laughs> Let's see if he, oh. You scored. I put it. Your turn. And I'm, uh, I'm in, a, in a Nike, how glamorous. All right, we're gonna try not to kick yeah. the camera guy. Yeah, you got it. You did? Yeah, wow. you see, look, look at the instant replay. So we tied. Whoa, check this out. So this is uh, this is like a hot tub? It is a hot tub. And then this is a bigger hot tub? No, it's a jet pool actually. 
Oh, really? So that, that thing over there shoots water out of it? Exactly. And so then you swim against it. A pretty cool feature here. Oh my god. Wow, I'm glad you did that. You can't hear us, but that's cool. I love that. That's the cherry on the cake. That is the cherry on top, is what we say. <laughs> I am officially lost. I'm gonna give you a floor plan when you leave. I'm <laughs> looking at the map. Where am I in the house? We need the thing that says, you are here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just past the cactus garden, yeah. we are entering. So we're gonna stop here. Elevator. Uh, elevator. Yeah. So this Whatever. elevator goes from the basement all the way up to the rooftop. There, you can see Josh Yeo, yeah? Look, there he is. And then this way is the gym. It is. So you have your private gym. <laughs> Take that. Oh God, the, the sporty tour. Yeah, so then you have the indoor outdoor. You also have like a, an infrared uh, sauna over there. You're kidding, where? No, here. Just... Oh, there, oh wow. Check this out. It's like a small infrared sauna. Little outdoor sauna? Yeah. Just warming up before the big game? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this explains why you gave me a basketball. So welcome to the Kobe Bryant Legacy basketball court. All the legends are here. Oh my God, there's a lot of pressure when the legends are watching. Yeah. Um, and I love that they put this big wall here so that I can't throw the ball on exactly. the neighbor's house. <laughs> exactly. So show me what you got. Oh my God, this is the worst. Here we go. Did you roll on that? Because that's only going to happen once. I got one in. Go, Fran. I used to play basketball when I was younger. You're kidding. It doesn't look like it. I know. <laughs> yeah, there's no French players on these walls. Oh my God, okay. I'm terrible. I got one in. France got zero. You're not going up on the wall. I want my face on the wall next. <laughs> this is the Olympic torches for your basketball game. It is, exactly. Isn't it cool? The mansion spans 16,672 square feet across three stories with seven bedrooms. Boom. This is huge. 11 baths. The bathroom is bigger than the bedroom. Yes. That's crazy. I can go all the way through? Yes. You go that way? Yeah, let's go this way. Gigantic shower. And there you go. There's more to see. This, this is her closet. And people do live here. This is not staged. This no, is like the real deal. Yes. Love this. Ladies love to have a lot of pair of shoes. And if this is not enough, you're still gonna find some extra space here. Oh my God. It's the deep shoe closet. Exactly. <laughs> the deepest depths of the shoe closet. It is nice, right? She's got a lot of shoes. Also, you have a coffee machine and a fridge. Actually, in, in the bathroom. In the bathroom too. Okay, so you wake up in the morning, you make your coffee, and then you go on your balcony and just like sip your coffee and watch towards the views. So every one of the bathrooms has a different signature stone wall? Correct. Josh, check this out. I love, I've never seen this before with the uh, stones in here. Yeah. How cool is this? I mean, that is not cheap. It's not. Nothing, nothing, nothing is, is cheap. cheap. All right, Dan, so this is the part when we talk numbers. Mm -hmm. And this house has an interesting pricing history. It was a spec house originally, meaning that it was built by a developer who didn't have a buyer in mind. He put it on the market and the client, your client who lives here now, bought it. What year did he buy it and how much did he pay? So he bought the house in 2021 and he bought it for like 44 million. 44 million and, and let me guess, all cash? Yes, all cash. Nice. He stays in it for how long before he decides to sell it? Uh, pretty much 18 months. 18 months in the house. Yes and then he goes to market at what price? 48. 48. So that was last year. So he bought it for 44, yes. and he goes to market initially at 48. Yes. So he was looking to make around $4 million. To yeah, uh, pretty months. much break even, like when you take off, you know, closing cost and commission. Okay. He was trying to break even. So what was the evolution of the pricing? So when I took over the listing in December, we put the house on the market for 43 million. At that pricing, he would take a haircut, a million dollar haircut on the house. Correct. And that's that's not what we're priced at today. No. So we came down even more. Yes. To where are we now? We are at 38 million. 38 million and he paid 44. Correct. So even in the best case scenario where the owner gets his full asking price, he'll still lose $6 million on the house. Do you think that your client came in at a high point in the market? Is yes. that why? Yes, he did. Do you think this is more of what we'll see in the short term? Yes, uh, I, I, and I don't think it's gonna be only short term. I think that's gonna last for at least the next 18 months. Along with the market 
becoming more uncertain and, and pricing getting squeezed a little bit. Yeah. There's a mansion tax that's on the horizon. Yeah. How is that impacting the so, sale of this place? So basically every uh, house that sells above five to 10 million, you're gonna have another city transfer tax of 4% to pay by the seller at the close of escrow. And if it's above $10 million, then the seller has to pay 5.5%. So at $38 million, he would get hit with a 5.5% mansion tax that starts on April 1st. Yes. He would pay approximately $2 million. So there's a real incentive to close before April right. 1st? Yes. And how do you how do you sort of communicate that to the market and, and make it happen more quickly? Because that's right around the corner. I mean, the thing is, first of all, that's why we decided to uh, give a, a, a good price cut and send a signal to the market that my seller is motivated to sell and that he wants to move on. I hope you pull it off. Thank you. At a good price and before April Fools. Exactly. The pressure is on. It is. Big thanks to Dan Malka with Icon Advisor for the amazing tour and huge thanks to the giant talent behind the camera, Josh Yeo at Make Art Now. And a special thanks to Jinx over at Revora for sharing your incredible work. And if the video is still playing, you're probably asleep, but maybe when you wake up, you can hit the like button. For now, I'm teeing this up. Oh my God, more sports. Exactly. You're killing me. If you want to relax and play, you have like this uh, three hole putting green. It would be really nice to come back as a kid. Yeah, and live here. Another sport the French are not known yeah. for, golf. Unfortunately for Dan and his client, the Star Resort did not sell before that big tax deadline, and right after April Fool's Day, it was yanked off the market. Dan tells me he still represents the house, which he's now quietly offering off-market. Interestingly, the buyer couldn't find any takers at $38 million, and now he's asking $44 million. Scan this QR code to find out exactly who the homeowner is and how much he pays in real estate taxes. The next stop is Miami Beachfront. Right now, we're flying over to some of the most expensive real estate in Miami's Sunny Isles. This is the Turnberry Club Ocean Residences. 54 stories, 154 units, six floors of luxury amenities. Down on one, two, and three, an infinity pool, bar, restaurant, coffee bar, and private dining room. Up on 30, 31, and 32 is the Sky Club. The developer says it cost over $100 million to construct. There are two more pools up here, one for sunrise, another for sunset. There's also a fitness center, spa, blow dry bar, and even an outdoor dog walking area. But we're actually here to see what's way above the Sky Club, up on the 48th floor. Hey guys, I'm Ray Parisi with CNBC and we're down in Miami today here to check out a $22.5 million residence that sits on top of the Atlantic Ocean. There are four bedrooms, six baths on the opposite side. Spectacular views of the bay. I'll give you a few seconds to take these epic drone shots in and then I'll meet you inside to show you around. We are on the 48th floor of one of the most luxurious buildings in all of Miami with super broker Sonata Ajim. Welcome to Turnberry Ocean Club Residences in beautiful Sunny Isles Beach. One of the coolest things about the unit is that the residence is flow through, and this is what we mean by this. Sonata's gonna head toward the bay, and I'm gonna head toward the ocean, and there's no walls or columns between us. Here's the ocean view out this balcony, and we'll send the camera out there so you can take a peek. And then we'll turn around and head back towards Sonata, who's all the way at the bay side. No columns, completely flow through. On that side, you're gonna get sunset, and on the ocean side, you're gonna get sunrise. This is what I love about this residence. Gorgeous quality of light and this open feel. And check out these fabulous views. So now do you want to meet me in the dining room? Sure. And we can start the tour. I hope you made a nice dinner. It's going to take her a while to get over here. The residence is actually 6,200 square feet living. Plus, you've got two terraces, which are about 1,300 square feet. So this is a very spacious residence that's a combination of two units. And this entertainment area, just the entertainment area, is over 3,000 square feet? Yeah, so about half. I absolutely love having visual separation between dining and great rooms. So 
If you're entertaining, you can just enclose these. So Anna's doing her best Vanna White. <laughs> I want to buy a vowel. <laughs> This is actually being sold with the furniture? Yes, this is being sold turnkey. You just need to bring your sunglasses. That's really what it means. Um, artwork, beautiful furnishing pieces, which are actually bespoke uh, for this particular residence. It, it was done by Nick Luasis, who's a renowned um, interior designer. It's like a combination of being on a cruise ship or a 747. <laughs> if a cruise ship could fly through the sky, this would be the effect of it. I'm so impressed by this year. It's panoramic you have a lot of privacy which is also wonderful and these terraces are very deep right so you can actually have a nice seating arrangement dining area summer kitchen and truly enjoy this we should head toward the kitchen right oh your favorite part of any home Sonata's gonna cook for us in this episode not. <laughs> so not only knows how to make reservations <laughs> A lot of times I've been impressed by two islands. Yes. In this situation, we have three islands. How cool is that? I love a shiny modern kitchen. Right. And the, and the three islands are insane. Yeah. The cool thing about this kitchen is if you're cooking, if you're washing dishes, no matter where you look in the kitchen, you have a view, either the ocean or the bay that way. You have to have side-by-side -side refrigerators. Wow, that is baller. I haven't, I've actually never seen fridge fridge. Right? But you have your freezer and your wine cooler on that other side. So cabinets are by Snydero, which is a preeminent Italian um, kitchen design company. All the appliances are German, they Gagano. And then you have Dornbracht fixtures. She just rattled off a lot of complicated names. Can you do them all three? Snydero, Gagano, Dornbracht. Wow, this is an interesting feature. You open it up and the cabinet lights up. So the... you can see all your pots and pans, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or the, the private chef can see all the pots and pans. When you see features like that and, and how integrated this all is and how the finishes are like perfection, you, you start to understand why this kitchen uh, cost around $400,000. Can you imagine? I mean, that's like a house. I know. Their service entrance on that side. Don't show it. I'm not going to show it, but, but I'll show where it is. But that's the whole point. <laughs> this, is the, this is the service entrance here. There's um, laundry and staff quarters. Yes. This is like the, the modern day Downton Abbey behind this door. <laughs> <laughs> and because there's restaurants in the building, you might have um, room service or food coming in through this area. There's Absolutely. another elevator beyond this area, the service elevator. Exactly. Correct? So your staff would come through the service elevator. If you're having food catered or chef, everything's coming through that side. You have your formal arrival where we came from. When they selected the hood and when they did the pendant lights here, they picked finishes and, and features that were not going to obstruct. So you're not ruining any of the flow through. Exactly. And I love the fact that you have a family room off the side of the kitchen. She forgot her sunglasses. But I, I did. did. <laughs> um, the interesting thing about this is you open up the doors and can you see the, the lighting right now above? And when a little breeze comes through, these will, these will kind of sway in the breeze, which is really nice. I love that. So should we check out some bedrooms now? Absolutely. So we've got two beautiful bedroom suites facing the bay. This is a guest room for the children. You very, know, very lucky children. Very lucky children who will have these gorgeous views. I mean, look at the bathrooms. There's marble throughout. You want to pop in there? The Sun-drenched marble bath. Next, I'm going to show you the oceanfront guest suite. And while we're passing through this beautiful hall, we look at the Venetian plaster. It's a very intricate detail to apply. It costs a fortune to do, as you know, because you need so many layers. So we're back at the uh, landing entry area, foyer. I have to show you this powder room. I mean, how gorgeous is this? You know, 50 shades of gray right here. <laughs> Beautiful marble. And then this bedroom has, I think, the best views. Oh my God, you wake up in here and you immediately better have sunglasses at the <laughs> end table so that you can put them on and be like, whew. Well, you have automatic shades, Ray, but uh, they would go up. New York's got great places. LA has great places, but it's hard to compete with that. I know. We're so high that earlier we saw a helicopter go by <laughs> and it was below us. There you go. This is crazy. You want to see the owner suite? Yes. With a dramatic double door entry. Boom. So I'm going to go into hers which is 
Wow, I mean, look at all this marble. Half a mountain in Italy is missing somewhere. I am in, I guess this is, this is definitely his side because there's a urinal over here. <laughs> and we would meet in the steam shower. Just a small adjustment, you know how that goes. <laughs> She's a little OCD. <laughs> Let's, Let's go see the rest. We're heading deeper into the primary suite. Yes, look at these leather upholstered closet doors. Wait a minute, doors. wait a minute. Don't don't just throw this away. Leather upholstered <laughs> closet doors. Wow, that's cool. Can that you see that? That is very cool. And there's lighting inside and drawers. Of course, they're going to be This is fancy, 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 fancy. This so is this is just some fancy. of the closet. Still haven't seen a bed. And double doors. Of course. We love a double door. Oh, There's always yeah. something good behind a double door. Big reveal. Boom. It's an Onare walk-in closet. I don't know what that means, but it feels like uh, Rolls Royce of closets. A lot of displays. A chandelier in the closet, because we love that. Of Gotta course. have a chandelier in the closet. Of course. Let's head even deeper into the owner's suite. Oh. Finally a bed. Look at this. That is spectacular. Don't touch it. Don't <laughs> right, don't touch, touch it. <laughs> it. <laughs> I feel like I could break that and it would be not These cheap. These are crystal butterfly chandelier. And what I love about it is that they're suspended from the ceiling. So if you open up your glass doors, there's a little bit of a breeze. They will move. I know the furniture's coming with yes. it, but you get sheets as well. Yeah, so in Florida, when you say turnkey, it means turnkey. That I didn't think that you were going to say yes to that. The entire house has a lot of closet space, yes. and they're all super high end. Yes. Do you have a sense of how much was spent on closets here? My understanding is it was over three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Three hundred and fifty grand? Yes. Some people buy a house at that number. I know. <laughs> Between the closets and the kitchen, three fifty for the closets, four hundred and fifty thousand for the kitchen. Yeah, eight hundred thousand dollars. And, and by the way, um, even the cabinets in the bath that we saw are Snydero and Cisornare, so they went the highest end with all the finishes here. And I know you said sheets, and we're also talking about artwork, every, every, everything. everything. Um, all the artwork is by Rosenbaum, which is the preeminent gallerist. Amazing art, I love it. Just goes with everything. And of course you have the best art yeah. of all. This is the million dollar view, right? No, it's the $22.5 million <laughs> view, right? Holy mackerel. The insane thing about this is that when you're looking out at the ocean, there are buildings to the left and right of us, but you don't see them. It's as if we're here by ourselves at the edge of the world. I know, it's very private here. And I just love being on the ocean. There is beachfront cabanas down there? There is a beachfront cabana that goes with this particular residence. What do beachfront cabanas go for if you wanted to just buy one? So it would run you $1.2 million to have a little <laughs> Wait, piece. For the cabana? Yes. $1.2 million? Yes, that's correct. I like that she just smiles through it. One point two million dollars. That's normal for us for luxury building like this. Yeah. That is mind blowing. I know. So maybe we can like get together and just buy the cabana. I, here. I think we're going to need a couple of more partners for the cabana. <laughs> yeah. It's precious real estate down there by the beach. That's crazy. Yes. One point two million dollar cabana. Let's go inside and talk more numbers. Okay. Did you bring your cash? I, I brought some cash. Okay. So now this is the part of the video when I fan you with $100 bills. <laughs> she loves this part. That's the best part. Let's Actually, talk money. Yeah, we're pulling out the Benjamins, so we're going to talk uh, dollars, cents, and price per square foot. Absolutely. So the price tag here is? $22.5 million. And the square footage, interior square footage, because that's what we base the sure, price per square foot 6, on. Sure, 6,200 square feet. 6,200, so we're not taking into consideration the balconies here. So if you lay out 10 Benjamins, interestingly, this equals about a square foot. So that's $1,000 in one square foot. Um, this is going to take forever, so we're going to have to fast forward this, aren't we? So this is 2,000. So you would have to cover the floors here in three layers of $100 bills. You would have to then add another 600 bucks on top of that to get $3,600 in one square foot. Three layers of Benjamins mm -hmm. all over the interior space. Sure. I'm going to ask you a question and I want a serious answer. Of course. Is $3,600 a square foot 
for residents in this building pie in the sky and then we're going to find out that the closing was far below that and this is just a crazy no, ass. No, this is very reasonable actually because a recent closing was for a duplex residence that closed for $23 million and 3900 a foot which happens to be a record for all closed residences in Sunny Isles Beach. If you had $3,600, <laughs> what single square foot would you buy in this I place? I think it would have to be, I don't know, a square foot on the terrace somewhere. You want it on the ocean side? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take you? it on the bay side okay, and we can fine. like wave at each other. <laughs> Interestingly, the cabana downstairs, 1.2 million yes. for 250 square feet. That's, that's a crazy price for that's square a foot. I think that translates to like 4,600 a foot, but that's included in here, so you don't have to worry about it. People are always curious about this, and buyers certainly are. Sure. Um, carrying costs, so HOA and real estate tax. Sure. So HOA dues per month are roughly $9,000. Um, and then taxes will be an additional, let's say, around $30,000 a month. So altogether per year, they're looking at about $500,000. Do people look for financing or are there cash deals at the I time? would say 99% of our transactions in general on the ultra luxury market um, will be cash transactions. You know, they just bring a lot of Benjamins. <laughs> Does anyone ever bring all the Benjamins and put them all on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> we, we would get a little skeptical about that, I think. <laughs> Hey Sonata, this looks like the perfect closing shot and a great place to say thank you for the tour. We appreciate it. Thank you, Ray. I'm glad you could make it. See you next time. Also, huge thank you to Drone Hub Media and wait for it, wait for it. There he is, the legend behind the camera, Blake Rubos. And of course, thank you for watching. I spoke to Sonata a little while ago and she says the apartment hasn't sold yet. You can scan this QR code to unlock a way deeper dive into Miami's ultra luxury condo scene, where buildings come with wave pools for surfing and futuristic elevators for taking your Porsche to the penthouse. Right now, we're headed to the Big Apple. Hey guys, I'm Ray Parisi with CNBC and we are in New York City today here to take a tour of Ivana Trump's townhouse mansion. Ivana lived here for decades. Sadly, she passed away inside. I'm told the interiors are still almost exactly as she left them. It is a six story residence with 17 rooms and it spans 8,725 square feet. The outside is stately and discreet. The inside is a totally different story. It's very beautiful and very French Versailles flavored on the inside and uh, everyone has been blown away by what was created. All right, you ready to be blown away? Get ready. Wow, Roger. Right, so welcome. Ivana said that the house is how Louis the 16th would have lived if he had money. <laughs> And I think that kind of sums it up perfectly in her own words. So this is exactly what it was like for the decades that she lived here? Yes, exactly. No, nothing has changed. So let me show you the elevator. This is a classic old school New York here. Hold on. Wow, there's even like, oh my God, there's actually gold, gold leaf in here too. <laughs> it's, I mean, this is, this is classic New York City. It's, it's amazing as we go up. This is uh, level one and we have five more to go up here. Yes, here. beautiful have... grand staircase. You know, if the because the house is built again, 80 feet deep, you're able to have a very nice shallow staircase. That... I mean, there is so much to look at in here. Uh, we didn't even note that there was a gigantic mural spanning the whole curved wall of this staircase. The house isn't staged, right? This is not staging. No. This is, uh, was, and uh, interestingly, we have the uh, Raising Trump book. There we go. By Ivana that's Trump. That's it. Um, so in, in 92, um, that's post-divorce. Exactly. And, and so she spent a significant amount of time here with the kids. Yeah. Roger, when you're showing this place, it's it's a very specific style. Um, it is really uh, classic Ivana. If we're being honest, this isn't necessarily what people are looking for right. today. That's true. People will comment about how incredibly beautiful what was done. But yes, people don't live like this today. When she purchased it, it was 1992. 1992. And she did, what is this renovation? She did a total renovation. It was in disrepair when she bought it. Everything was done by her. 
And you'll notice there's actually a skylight above the chandelier. Check this out. We're going to have Oscar come in here with his camera. That's, how cool um, is that? So you're getting, you're getting light from the light bulbs, but you're also getting light from the skylight above that. I've actually never seen that. And look at the, is that amazing, the depth? Yeah. Oscar, go, go way back so, to get a sense of what's what, the depth here? 80 feet. 80 feet. And then at its widest, it's 20. 20 feet. What's, what's in here? This is one of two kitchens. This um, is fascinating. Yeah. This is right. like a time Well, capsule. you can see that um, I don't believe uh, Ivana was cooking a lot, but it, it's a, what you would call, you know, it's a kind of a staff butler's pantry kitchen. Yeah, this is possibly the spot in the house that Ivana never set foot in. <laughs> so this is a 1992 yeah. kitchen. Yeah, right, exactly. It's kind of fascinating to see. Uh, a, a, probably a really fancy 92 kitchen. Oh my but, God, yeah. But, um, but for her staff, fancy for her staff. Yeah. Go up to the primary bedroom. I mean, it is dripping in gold crystals and red carpet. Really theater vibe here. Oh, you know, let's start in one of the most incredibly beautiful rooms in the house. Whoa! The, the leopard print library. Wow. Wow. Somebody like leopard. It's like a leopard micro suede. So this is the, the seating area to the primary suite. Exactly. Did she have staff who lived? Yes. In the... Yes. Of course she did. Yeah. And so here now... now we're in the primary bedroom. And then this is very special. Pink onyx with gold hardware. My favorite. We're going to send Oscar in and then he'll do a spin around. You can see Oscar on camera in the mirrors because it would be yes. impossible to hide it. Yes. Him. So on the floor is pink onyx. Mm -hmm. The onyx now is the stone of favor in many new developments. So what she put in in 1992 is now totally in, in vogue. It is fascinating to walk through um, this place and to think that it hasn't changed in 30 yeah, years. Yeah, 30 years. The next floor is uh, bedrooms. Fourth floor. More red carpeting. We have another canopied bedroom, again with a fireplace. We're walking through uh, what would have been the, the bedrooms of yeah, the of, Trump kids. Of the kids. Can you imagine if you were a kid and you woke up and, and this yeah. is what you wake up and it's kind of like a fantasy dollhouse. I just can't believe that nothing has changed. Really getting our steps in today. Roger, right. after you. Okay, let me lead the way. Going up, this was the gym? She, it's been varied, a guest bedroom. It was a gym most recently where she, you know, she famously would wave to Donatella Versace. I mean, how crazy is that? That you we would live be directly on, across the street. Imagine Ivana Trump on her treadmill here and uh, Donatella Versace <laughs> in that mansion that house. right there. We have what were staff rooms that she was using as closets. Oh my God. <laughs> ah, so, so this would. This this, would, these would have been originally the staff rooms. This is like, um, did, did you watch Downton Abbey? Yeah. This Usually is the, the Downton Abbey, the people are way downstairs. Uh, in this case, they would be way uh, up. Yeah, to, in Manhattan townhomes on the top floor, typically. Because uh, the top floor was With less the lower appealing. lower ceiling, the but here we have high ceilings. Back down on the first floor, there's a staff office, a second kitchen that hasn't been touched in years, and an outdoor courtyard. Now for the price tag. Can we talk numbers? Of course. At, at 26.5 million. Your square footage is? Well, so we're 8,725 square feet. Um, so it's basically asking 3,000 a square foot. A little over 3,000 yeah. square foot. How does that compare to um, the neighborhood as far as comps go per square foot? For the fifth Madison block, the park block. The sweet spot. Yeah, the, the, the most the primest of real yeah. estate. Uh, that's right on, right in the sweet spot of, of pricing. Does the Ivana provenance uh, add a little bit of a it premium? It adds the allure because everyone loved Ivana. Interestingly, she was also uh, a little bit of a, a real estate maven in, in, in this deal specifically. Um, back in 1992, she paid, uh, according to public records, 2.5 million, mm -hmm. um, which is a little over $300 a square foot, which is right. insane. But again, it needed a total gut renovation, right? right? So she did the gut reno 30 years ago. Um, and so remarkable... over 30 years, the market has, you know, skyrocketed. So 10 times is, you know, again, we're right, we're there. Yeah, so she, she That's said... why nobody's arguing the price. But somebody's got to buy it. Yes. Not only not argue, well, but also the renovation pull the trigger. that most people, you know, do feel it requires them to come in um, and remake it for themselves again. Right. Uh, and since COVID, we've had fewer people that want to take on a project. 
because of uh, supply chain issues. Supply materials. chain still is a concern. So your construction time could, be, could be longer like, than yeah two years. Yeah, you know, that's, and that's a long time. So some that have the you know, if there is a house ready to go that was renovated within the past five years, that and it's priced within reason, that would go like that might even get a better premium because they exactly. can get into it sooner. Oh yeah, much um, much higher price. Yeah, it's like it's the opportunity of walking into a house with a toothbrush versus, in this case, perhaps walking into the house with a sledgehammer. There you go. Which is sort of it's sort of sad because, um, you know, it's a long time, so people want to change things and make it their own. But when you look at the finishes in here oh. and the and the silk and the velvet, it's thirty years old and it's like it's held up really good. It looks brand new, and there's not a single blemish in the house. Which means she spent a fortune to do this 30 years ago and a, a lot of love yeah and a, and a lot of gold and a lot, and a lot of, of crystal after about a year on the market with no takers ivana's former townhouse took a four million dollar price cut the latest asking price 22.5 million dollars or just under 2600 bucks a square foot it's been over a year since ivana's old townhouse hit the market and roger over at douglas element is still looking for a buyer you can scan this QR code to find out two reasons one of the nation's top real estate experts believes Ivana's former home has been a tough sell. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. I'm Ray Parisi for CNBC. See you next time.